going on people and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering everything Behance and what you need to know as a designer in order to get started and post your very first project. It's really easy to get things set up and I'm going to show you just how easy it is by giving you an insight into my process, how I generate and map out ideas for Illustrator and how I use those ideas to create a full-fledged project through Behance and how everything is put together. So there's going to be no stone left unturned. To kick things off, I'm going to show you a bit of a time lapse of my process. Then we're going to jump into Behance and we're going to put everything together from start to finish and make sure that everything's ready to be published on our profiles. So let's get started. Instead of boring you guys with a long overview of my process, which took me around one to two hours to create, I thought it'd be better just to show you a time lapse of everything. I mean, let's be honest, one to two hours of footage of me essentially chopping and changing ideas until I'm happy is a little bit too much to ask you guys to sit through. And what we're going to do instead is run you through the different portions of this project after the time lapse has ended and then give you an idea of how everything comes together as a project on Behance. What you're seeing here, albeit extremely fast, is me playing around with different layout ideas and trying to capture key elements of Renew's brand identity design that I think would be relevant and interesting to show off in a case study. This is how I design most of my projects before launching them. I use Illustrator to map out ideas, where I want things to go, what I want to talk about, different mockups I want to showcase, and then when I'm happy, I export things ready to push live. But you don't necessarily have to use Illustrator. You can easily use Photoshop or any other design software you're comfortable with to achieve exactly the same thing. I mean, even better, if you're someone that can use pen and paper to map out ideas, this is perfectly fine too. For me, having visuals in front of me gives me a clearer picture of what might be interesting to showcase given the designs I've worked on for a project and what I've got to work with. It's a lot easier for me to do things this way to picture everything coming together. What I try to do in my Behance projects is give context behind everything. That doesn't necessarily mean with words either. I think the aim of the game is trying to retain someone's interest and the best way to do that I feel is by using images that are relevant to paint the picture of why you've designed things a certain way based on the client's needs and or objectives. The reasons why I use images mainly to do this is one, predominantly Behance is a very visual platform used by designers and non-designers to collate inspiration and two, Writing can give you a surface level understanding of the direction of a project and objectives, but capturing someone's imagination is often done better by showing them what it is that you've built. In this case, I've built Renew's brand identity so I have a lot to work with, starting with their logo, colour palette, typography, and then with context later showing how these materials are used on a larger scale to form vinyl wraps for sprinter vans, uniforms, and other brand collateral for example. One key takeaway that you can take away from all of this is that when you're putting together a Behance project, think about it in the same way as what you would with a case study. Try not to be overwhelming with too much writing. Be brief, engaging, but also relevant. The end goal ultimately is to try and attract clients. So imagine you're a client. What would you want to see? How has your work provided a solution and what amazing things have you been able to build for the business that you've collaborated with? Behance is a great platform to use because every image that you showcase can be easily saved and shared as long as you format them correctly. So let me show you how I've achieved this with the layout I've designed and how I traditionally design my projects. When I'm mapping out ideas in Illustrator, I tend to build my projects from the ground up starting with the cover, which is what you see in here first. This is what people will see before clicking for more information on what will be displayed on your profile. I then try to give a brief introduction on who the client is, what they do and how I've helped achieve their vision. What I've learned since using Behance is that the images you use across your projects will be saved and shared a lot. In previous projects, I usually merge my images together for a better viewing experience, but I'm testing something a little different here by splitting up each design in a separate artboard and uploading them as individual images. My thought process is that by giving people the freedom to save the exact image they want, rather than forcing them to save an image with other elements that they don't necessarily need, it'll increase the total amount of saves I get. Whether that's the case or not, we'll soon find out. Of course, this is just a theory test. I'm going to show you what I mean next as I move over to Behance and create a new project. When you create a new project, you'll be presented with essentially a blank canvas. All you have to do is upload your images and if you haven't already created a general layout of how you want things to look beforehand, you can do exactly what I did. Plan things out in Illustrator, Photoshop or whatever other method works best for you and you'll have a good idea of what order you'd like everything in. If your designs are saved separately, you can create grids so your images aren't just stacked one on top of another. 
which makes for a better viewing experience, I feel. Behance makes it super simple to collect your images together, which is essentially all that I'm doing here. I'm uploading each image that I'd like to be part of the project and reordering them where necessary. So if you've uploaded an image and decide you want it in a different position, don't panic, you can easily switch things around by hovering over it and clicking on the pencil icon for more options. Once I'm done uploading my designs, I like to add a nice outro or call to action with my logo, a few relevant social media channels and my email and website, giving people the opportunity to contact me after viewing the project if they fancy a quick chat. I then upload a cover, give the project a title, use relevant tags and categories, input what software I've used and add a condensed description of the project by clicking on add co-owners, credits and more. If you've collaborated with any other designers on a project, you can add them here too so make sure to give others credit for their work. At this point, it's really up to you whether you want to publish a project right now or save as a draft and publish at a later date. If you need to edit what you've done, don't worry, you can make changes even after a project is live, which is great. Make sure that you share your project after it's live. If you use social media channels to promote your work, let people know that you have a new Behance project live. You can share the link to your project by going to your profile, hovering over the cog in the top left corner, clicking promote and then copying the link you're given. I like to post my projects to my Instagram stories where you can post direct links, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and from time to time, Pinterest too. Believe me, it all helps. And that's how easy it is to plan, create and share your first Behance project. So if you're not already using it, please get on it guys. I wanna hear all about your amazing projects that you've posted in the comments below. And as usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.